Indian pharma at this moment uh, seems positive. Uh, what we believe is uh, that the impact of the demonetization, uh, which is impacting various many sectors negatively, we feel there is uh, hardly any impact on the uh, pharma trade. So far as the domestic formulation business is concerned, but because almost hundred percent of the business happens on a uh, clean basis without any cash involvement. So that is why we don't find any negative impact of this demonetization at this moment for the sector. Rather, in a way, we are seeing uh, because uh, they are allowed to um, take uh, the older currency. So uh, to some extent, we are seeing better volume uh, uh, or better volume growth in the uh, during the period uh, for the uh, for the formulation place. So that is relatively marginally positive for the uh, uh, trade, uh, pharma trade. And on the other hand, so far US business is concerned, we are of the view that uh, um, so many things has happened in the recent period which are favorable for the Indian pharma. Basically starting with uh, uh, the change of powers in uh, US government. So that is also a kind of a, a favorable development. Why? Because uh, with the Democrats losing, so we are not finding any kind of no serious uh, regulatory action on the pricing front. What we have been hearing from the Democrat uh, uh, Democrat uh, candidates. So on that front, there is a kind of a relief. And uh, on the other end, uh, regards the approval flow and the regulatory concerns with the facility of uh, various Indian players. On that front. Uh, uh, like uh, we have started seeing uh, positive development uh, for uh, few of the Indian leading names who have started clearing their facility from the uh, regulatory concerns. So now there is a visibility coming in for uh, uh, better approval and stronger uh, revenue growth in the US market. Thirdly, uh, on the pricing front, uh, which is been a kind of a key concern area since last few years. Uh, or rather uh, almost like uh, six, seven, eight quarters like that. So there is a kind of a bit uh, moderation in the kind of a pricing competition in the US uh, uh, generic business front. So that to some extent has reached to a kind of a normalcy kind of scenario only. So we are not finding any incremental intensification of uh, the price competition uh, of uh, US and for in the US generic business. So that is again favorable case for uh, uh, Indian pharma. And uh, more or less uh, uh, the currency which is currently the Indian INR basically which is currently uh, depreciating against the dollar. Uh, that is that also complements the overall pharma theme at this moment and when there is a kind of meaningful uncertainty uh, uh, prevailing at this moment uh, about many uh, sectors so at this moment i think uh, pharma can really play a kind of a defensive role and uh, gradually uh, the weightage in the pharma sector can improve in the market and uh, uh, overall the sector can see positive uh, movement so, so far as stock uh, performance are concerned. So that is how we are of the view that out of the co out of our uh, covered universe, uh, we think of stock like uh, Lupin and Aurobindo which are having a very clean uh, slate so far as uh, plants are concerned, not a single plant is having any regulatory uh, issues uh, with the USMDA. So they, uh, they are having clean slate so far as uh, plants are concerned and uh, uh, that would to some extent the near future will improve the approval flow and the overall growth. And they are uh, after correction they are trading at a better multiples also to their historical, historical valuations. So one should be positive uh, around them. And uh, other two ideas like Sun Pharma and uh, Glenmark. We are of the view that Sun Pharma, uh, after correction, uh, it is trading at a kind of a much better uh, valuation multiples and uh, the hope about clearance of its uh, problematic plant at Halol, uh, that is also kind, could be a kind of a key trigger in the near term. 
after basically clearance of uh, Lupin's plant uh, recently, the hope for uh, the clearance of uh, uh, Sun Farmers plant at her uh, is, is believed to be a kind of uh, one of the key trigger for the company. And uh, apart from that, uh, when uh, the likelihood of uh, synergy benefits flowing into Sun Sapphire 18 numbers from the Ranbaxi acquisition that should be supporting the supporting the uh, supporting the overall uh, Sun story in the near future. And we believe Sun is a kind of uh, with a better uh, R&D capabilities and a strong balanced position. Uh, it can surprise positively also in terms of uh, uh, inorganic uh, growth moves. So we remain positive there. And finally, Glenmark, we think uh, they are uh, likely to see see likely to be seeing the strongest growth of their uh, uh, of their lifetime to some extent in the US business front because of the exclusivity what they would be having on JTR uh, during mid 2000 uh, mid December 2016 and subsequently the growth momentum in the US centric business is likely to be much stronger so that is why we believe that okay over next two years uh, Glenmark is likely to deliver more than 30% kind of earnings growth and it is trading at a decent multiple. We do see re-rating happening there and it also can uh, provide much upside return. So basically uh, concluding uh, that I am concluding here that uh, in the pharma space uh, names like uh, Aurobindo, Glenmark. Uh, and Sun Lupin, these are the kind of preferred at this moment.